Worried about excess sealant blowing up your engine? In this video, we talk about some key steps you can take to prevent this failure. We also talk about how you can protect yourself when fighting with the dealer over a warranty claim, such as an engine failure. Let's get into it right now. So a lot of you guys have probably heard about the GR86 warranty fiasco with Toyota where excess sealant is causing engine failures. Allegedly, right? So today we have a Gen 1 BRZ. What I'm going to show you is two specific ways you can impede the probability of excess silicone in the oil strainer from starving the engine of oil. So what are we gonna do? We're going to cut open the oil filter, open up the pleats and check for any debris, especially silicone. Also, when we have the oil drained and the oil drain plug out, we are going to use our boroscope Look inside the engine oil pan and especially at the oil strainer to see if there's any excess silicone buildup. A few moments later. All right, we got our oil drained. It's not dribbling down on me. We're gonna use our boroscope and look inside the oil pan. Ideally, we could stick this up into the oil strainer and see if that mesh caught any of the excess silicone. That's not gonna be possible um, just by the design. It's a long tube that's close to the bottom of the oil pan to pick up the oil. And then all the way at the top of the tube is that mesh screen. So it's not going to be possible to stick our boroscope inside the oil strainer and look at that mesh. But we can do the next best thing is to look inside both the lower and upper oil pan to see if there's excess silicone or there may be even residual silicone hanging out in the oil pan. Let's hope not. Let's take a look, shall we? All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look around and um, I'm basically going to put my wand all around in both the upper and the lower oil pan. Right there, that's the top of our oil strainer and you can see how long that tube extends down. Looking in the upper oil pan, all right, so this pan's looking pretty good so far. If you look right there, you can see that lump of the gray silicone. Is that excessive? I'm glad it's right there and not broken off. Um, looks like it's gonna stay there, but you can absolutely see where the upper oil pan is sealed against the engine block. Excessive, I've seen where it's totally squished out and then there looks like a piece of bacon is squished out there. I would be really worried. All right, so you saw us look around the lower and the upper oil pan and around the oil pickup for excess silicone. Um, very fortunate, I can tell this customer, at least the upper and lower oil pan were not sealed with an excess amount of silicone. I didn't find any silicone hanging out in the oil pans, you know, extra that broke off. So great news for the customer. I'm sure they'll be glad to hear it. We're done down here. Let's go back up. We'll cut open that oil filter, see what we find. All right, so when I used to work at the dealership, we had used oil containers that they all strained into and uh, got emptied in there. One of the reasons I actually like to use a pan is so that we can see what the old oil looks like. Um, I've had junk come out of the pan before. Metal debris, silicone, foreign objects. I had a bolt come out one time. Typically what I'll do, I'll drain majority of the oil out and make sure it doesn't look like metallic or anything. And uh, usually the bottom like swath, you should be able to see any like debris and stuff because it all settled down to the bottom of the oil. And uh, once again, uh, very fortunate for this customer. There's um, uh, nothing out of the ordinary I see in this oil. Great news so far. Why don't we cut open that oil filter and find out if we continue to have good news. So I have our customer oil filter cut open and uh, basically what I wanna do is look through each individual pleat and what I'm looking for is, is there silicone in there? Any foreign objects, metal, and that'll give me a good indicator of excess silicone in the engine. What's the engine health like? Once again, fortunately for this customer, this oil filter looks very clean. So lucky for her. <laughs> I hate when I have to deliver bad news. <laughs> we decided to do this video at short notice because I think for the past three or four days, I've gotten at least one or two customer requests from uh, Gen 2 owners to, you know, what do you think about this excess silicone thing? Um, how can I prevent it? Can you take off my oil pan? So I thought we'd address it in this video. And this morning I saw this article from The Drive. You guys have probably uh, been through this, uh, for this guy's forum thread already, but why don't I quickly skim through it and I'll give you guys some of my thoughts. All right, so just reading directly from the article, 2022 GR86. RTV is a sealant used as a gasket for the Subaru FA24D engine. So yeah, absolutely. All the, when Subaru went to all chain engines, yeah, back when I was a technician, uh, silicone's everywhere. They 
pretty much got rid of almost all the gaskets. So that means so valve covers have some silicone. Um, cam carriers, that's all silicone. Uh, front timing cover, of course. Um, cam carriers are actually a three-piece thing too with three-part silicone. So you can imagine, um, just from what I said, this engine's full of silicone, or I should say sealed with silicone. Sealed full of silicone. Hopefully it's not full of silicone. Allegedly applied too liberally at the factory. I would agree. When RTV is dislodged in the engine oil, it can clog the pickup, cause oil starvation, and ruin the engine. Agreed. I've seen it. That's the gist of the article. Pretty much just Toyota's not covering the engine replacement on that car. Uh, let me give you guys some of my experience and thoughts as a former Subaru technician. So all the way back in the day, I was a Subaru dealer tech before the 2012 model year FRS came out. So I saw when they switched over to all the chain engines with the Imprezas, saw when the FRS came out, saw all the problems with the 13, saw the 14 come out, blah, blah, blah. I've seen it. Um, way back in the day when those chain engines came out, the uh, FB engines in the Impreza, the cam carriers always leaked. And then the Outback with the H6 engine, those timing covers always leak. Uh, what did I see over time? So doing all these warranty repairs, cam cover reseals, uh, which is an engine out job, by the way, totally sucks. I'm doing a whole bunch of uh, timing cover reseals on both the H6 and FB engines and later on FAs. At a certain point, I saw the engine started to get sealed with a dark gray, a different color silicone. I forget what the original color was and they used a lot of it and the engine still leaked. Excessive silicone, remember I talked about looking like bacon earlier? So yeah, I'd see timing covers where, you know, the robot put enough of that dark gray silicone where when it's sealed together, you'd see like two strips of bacon <laughs> on both sides of that timing cover. And I remember in my mind like, oh, well, they tried to do a fix, but they still leak sometimes. Yeah, in my opinion, an excessive amount of silicone in some areas and uh, still had a problem leaking. Um, here we are uh, many years later, no longer a dealer tech, and I think we're still fighting the same issues. All right, so what can you do? Let's say you're in a similar case, right? You know, you had the valve spring recall done and something bad happens or you have a drivability issue or, you know, you have a new GR86, the Gen 2, and you have an engine issue and you have to fight the dealer now for a warranty claim. What can you do? I think the number one thing you can do, don't fight with the dealer. And let me tell you why. The dealer actually doesn't have that much power. The dealer is not Toyota. The dealer is not Subaru. Who you really want to contact is corporate. So Subaru of America or, you know, Toyota of America, whatever they're called. Don't fight with the dealer. Don't fight with the service manager. You're wasting your time. Look on the website, find out what's the direct way to file a customer complaint with corporate. Yeah, your local dealership actually doesn't have that much power. Ah, yes. Get everything in writing. Verbal means nothing. Get it typed up on that repair order. Get a real email. Yeah. Verbal means nothing, get everything in writing. Really important too. If it's handwritten, that also means nothing. Again, back as a Subaru tech, years and years of training, um, for some reason they made us do a service advisor training too. And one important thing is that everything on the repair order needs to be typed up. If someone hand wrote it after the fact, that means nothing. If you see, if you see you know, a service advisor, a tech, the service manager, handwrite something, absolutely decline it. I want that thing typed up. Yeah, handwriting means anything handwritten on that repair order means absolutely nothing. Again, to sum it up, go straight to corporate, get everything in writing.